Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch Plays Kerbal Space Program, where today, Gina's turned around to the mission control and has been like, hey guys, we've got like two people stuck in space from rival space agencies, and obviously they have now called us to try and rescue them from these precarious predicaments they find themselves in at this point in time. The robot team turned around and had a little bit of a squealing fit, like, like, excited little girls because they've not really had much to do in this particular space agency and this particular save as we've been sending Kerbals left right and centre whether it's been Jeb going to ferry Taurus up into the, a suborbital flight or whether it's been Valentina going boldly forth where no Kerbals have been before and setting forth on the moon only to need rescuing later on but yes the point is we've not really been using many robotics and they they have been over the moon to do so of course not actually over the moon only Valentina and Jeb have actually done that Anyway, the boys in the shed got all their screws and bolts out and made this thing. Oh, what a beautiful stage going on there. Uh, I call it the Unmanned Rescue Craft URC Twin Class, obviously, because there, as you see up top, there are two, um, what do you call those, inline cockpits, uh, surrounded by some fuel tanks, uh, engine at the back. Those fuel tanks are feeding inwards. I can get rid of them for the return journey just to see which uh, plan is better for coming back through the atmosphere. And we're using the slimline cubic pro body that comes with the cacti telescope mod. But anyway, the flight path is nominal. Our fuel use is just about nominal. Unfortunately, our targeting is well off because we forgot to line everything up before we launched. But a quick revert puts us back climbing up through the atmosphere directly underneath our target here so everything should be a little bit better here you'll notice we're a little bit lower down than when we left it just a second ago but all should be good we are looking to be uh, very much on target if you look at your the pink marker on the nav ball there everything seems to be working out incredibly well a few seconds later the burnout in our outer stage means it is time to stage i forgot to put probe cores on those outer well, in our outer layer, so they're not going to make it back down to the surface. Unfortunately, this is the way of things. I should really put the stage recovery mod on, as I, I seem to be making lots of allowances, and unfortunately, the way that the game is set up doesn't quite do it for me, uh, mainly because the things that I'm dropping around here, there is no way that I can get into a stable orbit and then switch back to them to watch them fall. So if they go below 30 kilometers whilst I'm still trying to do all these maneuvers, those old stages will die, no matter what I have done to them, which is a little bit of a shame, to be honest. Is, uh, in fact, it is a great big shame because I, I, I do make a lot of allowances to try and get this stuff back, but you know, Kerbal, hey. Anyway, enough complaining about a lack of features that will probably break my computer anyway because the physics bubble will be so large that it would have to like use more RAM than it could possibly use. Anyway, looking at the map just a second ago that I was complaining all over, you would have noticed that we'd actually launched a little bit late. So we are trailing behind the target that we were coming for here. And that that's all right. That's fairly fairly easy to deal with. I think I would have preferred to be a little bit of ahead uh, just so that when trying to rendezvous I would have gone for a slightly larger orbit and then I could have caught up whereas where they are quite in a low orbit anyway trying to get into a lower orbit to catch up with them runs a lot of risk of smashing into the atmosphere which is always a trouble always a concern sorry when you are down below 100 kilometers as we are here low curb in orbit I always think of that between sort of 70 and 100 kilometers if you're going above 100 kilometers you're starting to get into sort of the, the mid space range or at least that that's my opinion of it here so we got rid of our tertiary stage i think it was uh just that that stage was literally to give us enough push to get up into orbit as you can see i did slightly underestimate how much fuel was needed in that but that's all right we, we've got enough fuel left to be able to deal with things like that uh, unfortunately sorting out a, uh, an, an encounter node means that we're still trying to go down through the atmosphere so that that's not really going to work um, we're going to just have to try and make a smaller smaller orbit as possible and just wait for us to catch up and i spend a lot of time mucking around getting the orbit as low as possible while still not being in the atmosphere and i think we're going to skip that because it is a lot of mucking around just like a little little slow down here a little speed up there just to just to try and keep myself skimming the top of the atmosphere after a couple of space days or as we call them orbits i've been watching these encounter nodes get closer by 40 kilometers each time and we are finally at the point well we were just at 80 kilometers now we've got a 40 kilometer uh, encounter coming up with this next one and then the one after that should hopefully be somewhere close to zero now i say somewhere close to zero because it's not been exactly 40 kilometers and i wasn't exactly 80 kilometers away so if we watch this right here we'll see we're 41 kilometers away and as we come up to the point 
boom, any, any second, boom, we go a little bit further. So if we go up to uh, retrograde, not retrograde, prograde, and just give a tiny little push upwards, we can bring those closer together to get as close as possible an encounter. An encounter as close as possible would be the uh, correct way of wording that rather than the mess of English that I just used there. Uh, also trying to trim down my inclination node a little bit just because it's nice to have it as close as possible when you actually come up for that final approach so you're not trying to burn in funny directions, you're just burning along the line of your orbit, which is always nice to have. I think it's always nice to have. It keeps everything sort of nice and straight. You're not trying to deal with coming down at a weird angle through the atmosphere or anything funny like that. But here we go. We're coming up on our final approach here. We are incredibly close to each other now. If we take a moment to have a look around, as I will no doubt do shortly after I've arranged myself, we're going to start pulling and pushing our nodes to get closer towards uh, the target. Obviously, this is the same rendezvous procedure we use every time we've rendezvoused. We get as close as we can, or as close as we feel is comfortable to start making maneuvers, and then start pushing and pulling our uh, retrograde and prograde marker around until they match up with the pink markers and then we just let ourselves drift and boy do we drift for a while I mean as you can see on my navel there we are drifting towards the target at a measly 17 meters per second and when you've got kilometers five kilometers in this case to cover that is actually quite a slow speed and whilst when when you're in orbit and especially when rendezvousing you want to take things slowly well at least relative to each other I'm a very impatient person. So what we're going to do is have a look at our prograde and just do our best to, to get over there as fast as possible. Give ourselves more speed. Use the time acceleration to our greatest uh, benefit and get within 100 meters. I've seen people get out at this distance to uh, to fly over and I, I could have, to be fair. I mean, I'm just as good with a jetpack as I am with a rocket engine. So there is no reason why I couldn't have just flown uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Milka, Milka, all the way from that Hulk over there to our vessel. But I think that maybe within 100, 100 meters here is probably good enough. We're, we're starting to trim our speed down to close to zero. We're traveling at less than uh, 10 meters per second. And finally, we are coming down to within negligible like drift distance or drift speed from each other. So it's time to uh, swap over and get the uh, first rescuee out of her stranded vessel. Hey, okay, so we are close enough just to like put on over. I turn my lights on just because it's really nice to be able to see when you are lined up perfectly. This is a l little thing that I figured out during time. Like, it's quite hard to figure out where your Kerbal's looking, especially when you're like moving your camera angles around trying to see what's the best way to approach. So I, I have my lights on and then I can see what she's looking at. If my vessel has suddenly lit up, then great. All right, so it's time to start thinking about where how we're going to catch up with this uh, second one. You can see it's quite a quite a bit further out thankfully we do have quite a massive fuel allowance here so it shouldn't be too much trouble my first thought is to get the inclination node sorted or at least relatively sorted as close as as close to zero as i can be bothered to sort out in this low orbit what i should have actually done if i wanted to be like efficient with fuel is actually push myself out there first because as we all know when you're making inclination changes the higher up in your orbit you are the slower you're traveling so the less delta v you have to expend to do that delta v uh, to do that inclination change but you know i didn't think about that at the time i was just like oh let's get this sorted first as i don't know where i'm going to push up to ma match up my apple apsis with its apple apsis so let's just do this first or at least yeah that was that was my thought process so here we go we're, we're burning away looking north just getting our uh, our descending node to get close to zero um uh, unfortunately our descending node is slowly drifting off of our screen so we're gonna have to watch the other one here and when i'm like okay that's good enough as, as I do quite often, I'm like, okay, that's good enough. I set up something for what I hope to be uh, an automatic encounter, what I call an automatic encounter, one where we just go up and suddenly we are close enough. Uh, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time mucking around with this maneuver node, trying to get it somewhere close. Obviously, without the inclination change done right, we don't actually have the correct trajectory when we try and push our way up there which is a little bit of an oversight of mine uh, definitely should have been sorted out there but this can all be sorted uh, one thing that i did think was maybe hey if we just go up where our ascending node is then the other side will be our descending node and then all the nodes will line up but of course space doesn't work like that that's not how timing works so we're gonna have to try and do it through a, a double maneuver node system and i think i finally got something close to what we're after here so i think we're just going to skip ahead because i'm going to spend a lot more time mucking around but we are going to end up just with this maneuver node setup that i've got going on here 
Enacting out these maneuver nodes is a relatively easy enough affair. Uh, down at the first one, all we have to do is burn prograde until our target altitude is reached. And this only took a couple of seconds, it was easy enough. Uh, then we have to drift until the next maneuver node, where we uh, match the inclinations, which again is easy enough. We just look at the marker, make our burn for the appropriate length of time, and then suddenly everything's all lined up and we get to drift on our way to the top of the arc where we can start thinking about how we're going to rendezvous. And how do we rendezvous when we're on such an eccentric orbit and the other guy isn't? Well, it is exactly the same as any other rendezvous. You find out your targeting markers, you use your prograde and your retrograde, you give it a little bit of a push, a little bit of a pull, and eventually you just end up trying to match your speeds. And it is literally as simple as that. Meaning the only thing left to do is to get our stranded Kerbal out of her pod and fly on over. Now this was 140 meters, which could have been a bit of an effort, but I've been using the uh, fly forwards halfway and then start decelerating for half the distance method for quite some time now whilst on these jetpacks. And that really does eat up the distance like you would not believe. It is quite a high risk maneuver. If I get it wrong, I could end up slamming into my ship at quite a speed or worse yet, going zipping past it without being able to slow down quick enough. But these are relatively short distances, so we don't really have to worry about that sort of thing. I don't think we're ever going to run out of EVA fuel like to such an extent that we can't sort ourselves out. Okay, so now it's time to figure out our return journey, and it is simple. We all, we all know how to come back home from Kerb, and you find to Kerbin, sorry, you find your retrograde, you pull yourself down, well, you pull your periaps down as far as possible, or in this case, I've taken it down to something like 12 kilometers, something like that. This is mainly so that we don't burn all our heat as quick as possible. Though, if I really wanted to come down nice and shallow, I could have gone down for maybe a 40 or a 50 kilometer aero braking maneuver, and this, that would have taken a long time. But we have a heat shield on the front of this, so I think going down real deep into the atmosphere should be a more than passable way of coming back. Indeed, this vessel was designed with that heat shield to take such deep impact into the atmosphere okay so we're going to drift our way down and this is also another slightly boring part but you know this is something that has to happen when you're in space you do have immense patches of time where you're just drifting towards your target wondering is this going to be the death of us are we going to fall through the atmosphere fine is the ship going to take it will any micrometeorites come along and pierce our ca canopy ma making the uh, vacuum of space open to us and thus sucking all our internal fluids out or at least making our blood boil and our eyes freeze as you know we all know what happens in space uh, it's not not a total recall scenario where everything sort of swells up and explodes which is kind of unfortunate now that i think about it but anyway here we are we're coming into the atmosphere we have done our staging to dump the fuel tanks now i I did this just because I think it looks a little bit better, but I have no idea, as previously stated in other um, episodes, whether a larger spacecraft will slow down quicker, therefore get less heating, or because it slows down quicker, it takes on more heating because there's more friction involved. I, I don't know. I, I have to make a whole series of experiments to find out what's going on there. But we are already... The diving deep into the atmosphere we have just passed the point where our periaps was when we were up on the top of our orbit there but right now we are currently on the top of our orbit and that is coming down all the time we are down to less than 10, 10 kilometers falling at roughly 200 meters per second but of course with the deployment of the parachutes this starts to become considerably less and here we go we're going to start drifting through clouds uh, like drifting through clouds is good but as you all know I have troubles with landings. They are long, they are slow, and I think I'm gonna actually just jump her head a little bit here. Less than 100 meters to go, and we are bracing for impact. Boom, first landing these Kerbals have ever performed. So, woo, yeah, made it back from space. And as we go and check them out in the astronaut complex, I'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this dual rescue mission. I will see you next time, where I think we're just gonna do a whole load of commercial stuff, because. We need some money, we need to upgrade a whole load of buildings, including the space plane hangar and the runway. Also need to, up to upgrade my research center R&D building so that we can start getting some better, better parts. Bye!